We're running late, it's 7 o'clock, we're meant to leave at 6.30 to go to Kevin Richardson's Wildlife Sanctuary. I'm pretty excited about it. This is the only reason we came to Joburg. Yes. can game reserve walking or getting out of your vehicle is dangerous okay someone's here marinas yeah, melvin melvin pleased to meet you good, good morning uh good in yourself i'm kersha kersha marinas pleased to meet you Area over here. Uh, we are still on the reserve, so I'm going to ask you guys to stay close to the tented camp area. All right. Wild animals roaming around. So there's lion, there's everything around. Hey, Edie. Um, hey, muffin. Look how sharp that is. Oh, that would hurt. <laughs> oh, sorry. You're waiting for me. Jeez. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kevin Richardson Wildlife Sanctuary. Um, for now, it's going to appear like I'm driving past most of the enclosure and ignoring all the animals, but don't worry, I have a plan. I guess no pet petting of the animals? Oh, no, 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 no. No even, petting, yeah. Even so. I don't touch them. Okay. And you'll see short, uh, surely enough why. Yeah. <laughs> You can, you can try. <laughs> Will you take a picture then? Because he, he's grown up with these and he wears his shirt with the same smell and everything. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yes. No. Each and every one know. of these lines he's formed a personal relationship with for over 10 years. Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right, so for those of you who would like to actually come out of the vehicle, you're actually welcome to do so. Oh, yeah. You can drive me on the ground. Oh, my God, they're so beautiful. I know. So I like this enclosure specifically because you can actually perfectly see the three different kinds of lines you can actually find in Africa, which is your white line, your black maned male line, and then, of course, uh, your plain tawny line that has less of a black mane. <laughs> yeah, so Nancy is prone to do this. <laughs> yeah, he's the dominant one here. Yeah, here's he's so big. Yeah, yeah, he's quite big, and trust yeah. me, he's not even the biggest we have. Really? Yeah. Okay. We have another white male who's much bigger. This guy weighs probably about 220 kilograms, but Gandalf, <laughs> but Gandalf is at 250. So a lot of farms around actually donate us uh, some meat, which is mostly horse and cow. Sometimes we have some game and venison meat as well, but most times it's horse and cow. The enclosures and the lions. Now, the only lions that Kevin doesn't interact with are two females who's in the north part of the sanctuary. He's grumpy. Hello, buddy. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, little buddy. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. Actually, no, these two boys are five years old. Five Both years. of them. Both of them are five years one old. One looks twice the age of the other. He's the one who had much, to, much yeah. of a harder life. Yeah. I was wondering, you also got to remember about these two boys, specifically Yame. He does not like females. Yeah. Head and see some of the other lions. Same as well. And to the right over there in the shade, that's Amy. Mm -hmm. So these are uh, some of Kevin's most fam uh, famous uh, lionesses. Yeah. Okay. These are, these are the two lions that actually got Kevin to become so actively uh, against can hunting and cub petting. Because while he was working at the lion park where he first started his career working with the big predators, uh, he was raising Megan Amy over here. While he was working, he went on one week's leave holiday. And after he came back, he realized that uh, Megan and Amy were not there anymore. So he went to the owner and said, well, where's, where are my lions? And he said, well, first and foremost, they're not your lions. Second of all, I sold them to a lion farm. 
So they're going to be part of a breeding program for breeding lions for can hunting. Mm -hmm. And oh. so Kevin fought tooth and nail to get them back. Mm -hmm. um, he first of all like he asked Rodney like what how can you do that man? These are nice lions. They they I, I raised them, I've I had a relationship a re with them. Relationship with them. Exactly. And Rodney just simply said to him, Sorry Kev, these are not your lions, you don't own them. A hard battle to try and get them back from the guy who uh, they were sold to and then uh, the guy who actually owned the lion farm they were sold to uh, brought uh, two lionesses back. Kevin looked in the back and just called out Maggie, Amy and realized these are not my, here's the two lionesses. And he said, come back up the car, we're going to go straight back and go fetch my lions. Mm. And so he went back and Amy has a long gash on her, on her inner left thigh mm -hmm. just from the, the six days that they had spent there at that farm because uh, okay. they were in an enclosure about one fifth the size with about 17 other lions in the same enclosure mm -hmm. and they were kept in horrible like conditions. All right, let's go have a look hey, at Bobcat and Gabby. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, he's grumpy. Yeah, just send me a Very, very hot blooded. You can take them for an enrichment walk and they can go walk about the yard. The ultimate mm. idea is to actually um, encourage the idea for people to actually have animals be wild and free instead of in captivity. Mm. Right, so this over here is uh, Bobcat and Gabby. Mm. Bobcat mm. being this very dark haired male over here, and of course his sister Gabby. Sister? Yeah, his sister. She's six months younger than him. Uh, Bobcat, he's 12 years old at the moment. Is that a purr? Oh no, that's a growl. <laughs> You're not purring. No, lions don't purr, they growl. <laughs> the only big cat that can actually purr is a cheetah. And oh. a mountain lion, the cougar. Be hunted in any way possible, uh, mm. which I completely agree with. They're not hunted, they're murdered. Yeah. They're Shame just though. basically raised for, for cup petting and can hunting eventually. Mm. Oh. That's Naomi who just got up now. She has one eye. She's the one with the oh, one yeah. eye. <laughs> oh. Naomi. Oh. So, Marina, you know, 10, 15 years time, oh. Kevin will have fulfilled his idea of, of no captured lions effectively here. And then? The then it's just up to the Kevin Richardson Foundation to actually realize Kevin's dream of preserving habitat and educating people about the importance of preserving wildlife habitat for lions. So um, after the sanctuary, after the last lion dies, then it's just going to be the foundation. Then we're going to hopefully do most education just for the foundation and then go make sure we can protect habitat for the lions. The first step of that process is something called the Lands for Lions, the Land for Lions campaign. Yeah. And it's, that's part of our purchasing of the farm that we're actually uh, currently residing and renting on. And so would, would there in effect be uh, uh, wild animals within, within the sanctuary? What, or what will be the sanctuary then? Oh, the sanctuary, the, the fences are gonna, just going to fall down. So no. nothing's going to be over here after like 15 years or so. Yeah. So then we're just going to make sure we can preserve the habitat where, where there are wild lions, and make sure we can actually yeah. uh, practice proper conservation principles mm. to those wildlife areas where it's actually needed. Hello, buddy. Babe, babe, babe. Hi, Johnny. Hello. Now the electric fence is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> 90 kilograms. However, Khan over here, he's about 55, 60. Wow. A lion, and then another pair of lions. There were six in the six in the fright, and there's the other two black leopards, Khan and Mr. And then also a clan of five spotted hyenas, and then also Jan Bell and two other female lions. Oh, you can totally see the spots. Yeah. No, no. Just trying to pat it. No, no, no. Well. They were the last three roaming big cats.
Hello. Hello. Alright guys, so over here we have the spotted hyena, which is one of four hyenas you can find in Africa. And in descending order of their size, you have the spotted hyena, the brown hyena, the striped hyena, and also the artful. Oh, look, it's coming. Oh, it's so big. The spotted hyena is one of Africa's most successful predators. <laughs> they actually have the same amount of hunting success as lions, which is 40%. Uh, so they're not the most successful hunters, but still they do hunt 90% of their own food. The only reason, the, one of the main reasons why they got this image as being scavengers and thieves is because they were the only animals who were still busy feeding on the carcass with the bones uh, when people actually found them. Exactly. So lions and leopards, they don't have such a powerful draw as the hyenas do. So they eat the meat and they eat the bones or cartilage they can and leave the rest of the carcass. And these guys, they, they, they can actually come and clean up. However, when they hunt something, they eat everything. So they eat the meat, the skin, the hair, and of course the bones. And because they actually eat the bones of their carcasses, they have an incredibly strong uh, bite force. Lions can deliver a bite force of up to 600 pounds per square inch. However, the spotted hyena can deliver a bite force of up to 1,100 pounds per square inch. Almost doubled. Now keep in mind that the great white shark, one of the most powerful bite forces in nature, has a bite force of 2,000 pounds per square inch. That's not very far away. So, did you perhaps see in Germany, there's a film release called Mia and the White Lion? Yeah. Oh, yeah. These are the lions who played in the movie. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, concerning the canned hunting industry and cub baiting, that's one of the best movies you can ever see who, that will show you exactly what's going on in South Africa with lions. Hmm. So, we have a pride of six in this enclosure. Uh, the two males are Thor and Charlie. Uh, completely arranged. Lucky to see the end of this one. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's like crying now. Oh, wow. So good. Whoa. Oh, he's not happy. Oh, he doesn't oh, like the rain. <laughs> he is not happy. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Oh, he's messy. Wow. He's giant. It was worth the one hour and 20 minute drive coming here. Uh, we got to see all the, all the um, famous animals on YouTube, mm -hmm. like Meg, Bobcat, and George, oh, the lion. white lions. And then the two leopards. I was very impressed with the spotted hyenas, mm. actually. I didn't even know they looked that big. So what they did is we first went into like, I don't even know what it's called, like this tent where we had um, coffee and muffins. not supposed to I'm so sorry guys but I was super hungry uh, and it was beautiful weather and we went to each enclosure to check out all the animals um, at the end of it it started to rain oh Bucket. pouring now, lucky I bought the shirt yeah that's why he's wearing the shirt now because we got completely drenched so I, it was definitely worth it um, oh yeah absolutely yeah we're just waiting for them to open up the gate so that we can go out and then we're gonna drive back to Joburg and find a vegan place to eat. Bye guys, that's it.